and our Q&A. So Rocky Anderson, let's start with you. Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, I really appreciate the invitation, and it's great to be here in your fair city today. Uh, I want to emphasize, and I know we want to talk about where we go from here, but it is so absolutely crucial, I think, especially for young people to realize this is not normal. This is not just the way things go in this country. This is an absolute aberration, and it's getting worse. We're watching our nation in so many different ways being completely transformed, and it's all of us who are getting shafted, and the future is getting shafted, and it's going to be because we are not exercising in every possible way the vigilance, the activism, taking the, the kinds of committed actions that have always brought about progressive change in this country, and so it is up to us. It's not just about electing the right people. I am running for president. I think it's really important that we have somebody speak to this country tell the people of this country the truth rather than the lies we're hearing from the Republican, the Democratic parties, talk about what the solutions are, but it's all part of bringing people together because in our nation, that's the only way it ever happens. We didn't see slavery abolished in this country without a grassroots anti-slavery movement. We didn't see the women, women get the vote in this country without the women's suffrage movement. And these were, it was a long, sustained, tenacious effort. We would not have seen the civil rights movement if we'd left it up to our elected officials. Martin Luther King Jr. went in to see President Johnson after the Civil Rights Act was passed in 1964, and he said, okay, now it's time for a Voting Rights Act. President Johnson said, no, this country isn't ready for it. It's going to take years for that. Well, Martin Luther King Jr. went back to Selma, they hit the streets, and within a year that legislation was passed. The people did it. We can do it too. Keep in mind, I don't know how much time I've got. I've got a timekeeper here. He just waved at me, so I guess. I'll... Okay, keep in mind, this is the new Gilded Age. It hasn't been like this since the 19. 20s in this country. The top 1% hold 40% of the wealth in this country? That can be changed. It's got to be changed. It was changed before after the first Gilded Act, Gilded Age. But it took tenacious action. It took people recognizing the economic and social injustice and demanding those changes. And a lot of it was because of good, sensible tax policy. 22% of children in this country are living in poverty while that 1% hold 40% of the wealth. We have 2.3 million people in our prisons and jails. By far the worst incarceration rate in the world. And 60% of them are black or Latino when they really only comprise about 30% of our population in this country. Tax cuts for the wealthy, they are the equivalent of a $3 million raise for the richest 160,000 people in this country. When people are losing their homes, when students who took out loans to get tuition are unable to pay them, and then the government ends up having to back them up while well, the students, or former students, still have the debt hanging over their heads. Capital gains at 15%, people who cut coupons, people who make their money passively sitting back making investments while working people are struggling like they are in this country. Capital gains at 15%, it's absolutely regressive. We need to demand that everybody be taxed at those highest incremental rates at the same rate, however they make their money. My time is almost run. We could go through all of these things, but we know that these massive changes, including the ratcheting up of an imperial presidency like this country has never seen, it's going to keep 
happening unless we all stick together, organize, take tenacious, sustained action, and let them know we are not going to give up until we see that change in our nation.